Welcome to the show. We have a great show today. Uh, it's good to be getting back to an actual knife build again. It's kind of been a while. I hope to be doing a lot more of these in the future, especially now that I have the new forge up and hopefully running. But actually for this particular build, uh, well, I will be using the gas forge a little bit, uh, but it won't be absolutely necessary. And I'll show you what I mean as we get into this. I'm going to be doing this not entirely by hand uh, with hand tools, but mostly with hand tools. I'm going to try to avoid using power tools to show that a very decent, capable knife can be made without spending a lot of money on expensive tools. So to begin with, I'm going to be working with a piece of O1 tool steel. Uh, I'm using a, just kind of a leftover piece from another, uh, from another project I did. You really could use any kind of steel to make a knife. If you want to be able to properly heat treat and harden the knife, it's a good idea to use a high carbon steel. The nice thing about O1 tool steel is that not only does it have high carbon content, but it also has some other alloys that make it resistant to corrosion, as well as making it one of the easier steels to, uh, to properly heat treat. Now normally you would see me using an angle grinder to cut out the shape of the knife that I want. In this case I will be using a hacksaw. This is a fairly cheap one that I bought. I think I got this at Walmart. It's, uh, it's nothing fancy or special. Uh, the main thing with hacksaws is that the, the better the blade for the hacksaw, the easier it's going to be to really uh, to really cut through metal quickly. This isn't a really great hacksaw blade in here, but I did buy some others in case I need them. But even a very good blade for a hacksaw doesn't cost more than a few dollars. Of course, this is going to take a lot longer than it would with, uh, with a power tool. I've seen people use band saws for doing this type of cutting. Obviously, I usually use an angle grinder because I don't have a band saw. But depending on how much steel you have to cut through, you know, how large the knife is, uh, it shouldn't take more than really maybe 30 minutes to at most, I would say, an hour to cut out the basic shape of the knife. Now, if you're first starting out, this will obviously be a lot of hard work and you may want to pace yourself a little bit. But if you are accustomed to doing, you know, repetitive heavy work, uh, you'll find that this actually goes quicker than you might expect. Once I have the shape roughed out, I'm going to go to my metal files. If you know anything about metal files, you know that the files I'm using here are actually very cheap. You know, some of these I probably spent six or seven dollars and got four or five files. You really don't need to spend a lot of money to get a pretty decent file. Even the high quality brand name files usually are running you know, maybe anywhere from seven or eight dollars up to maybe 12 or 13. And a lot of times you can buy them in a set and save some money that way too. Again, this process will take quite a bit more time than if you were using a belt grinder uh, or really there's a lot of different kinds of power equipment that you could use. Of course, all those things can save time, uh, but there's also drawbacks. Obviously, there's an element of danger there if you're using, especially if you're using something that runs at high RPM or has like a really abrasive belt. There's often going to be safety equipment that you'll need to use, like a respirator or, or eye protection. Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use safety equipment if you're doing file work. I think it's always a good idea to wear especially eye protection. But really, if you're working with a hand file, you can keep the safety equipment to a pretty reasonable minimum. Of course, it's always good to be cautious, especially as you begin to get sharp edges and sharp corners. If you're applying a lot of force with each stroke of the file, it's pretty easy to miss or overshoot and give yourself a pretty good gash. But I think if you use a reasonable amount of caution, you can definitely take the steps you need to, uh, take the time you need to, and avoid any real potential for serious injury. Now, when it comes to putting in the bevel for this knife, even a worn out cheap file will actually move metal pretty quickly. But for this project, I'm going for a hand forged look. So I am going to be firing up my forge and using the hammer a little bit to, uh, to create the bevel and to add a little bit of character to the, to the finish. Again, it is not absolutely necessary to use a forge when you're making a knife like this, not even for the heat treat. I'll show you a way to do that uh, toward the end. But if you are interested in building your own forge, uh, there are several ways to do it. And uh, one of them you can actually do pretty much in your backyard in about an hour. I have a video on that. I will post a link to that video right here so you can go and check it out. It's actually much easier than you might think. Of course, if you're gonna build a forge like the one I have here, that's a little bit more involved and takes a little bit more time and money and knowledge. But if all you need is something you know simple and expedient that you can throw together in an hour or two, uh, that's definitely doable. Once I have the bevel shaped about the way I want it, uh, you'll see me kind of going over the rest of the blade, just tapping on it with the hammer. I'm doing that, especially while the workpiece is a little bit cooler. You know, it's probably still 800 or 1000 degrees, but it's not glowing red. That just means that uh, as I'm swinging the hammer, I'm not doing, uh, I'm not really moving a lot of steel, but I'm just making a few little marks in the surface. Uh, this is also a good time, you know, I started out with a very, a very flat, straight piece of steel, and undoubtedly as I've been working it with the hammer, I've 
you know, put a little bend in here or there. So when the steel is a little bit cooler, that's a good time to take the hammer and kind of use those blows to straighten it out. Make sure that you have more or less, again, a straight flat piece of steel. Once I have the edge down to about a sixteenth of an inch, I don't want to take it any further down than that before I do the heat treat, uh, because when it goes into the quench, the blade will have a tendency to warp if that edge is too thin. Now, the other thing I'm going to do before I do the heat treat, and I would say this is optional, you know, if you start with a piece of steel uh, that came to you in an annealed state or uh, a normalized state, and you aren't using a forge, if you just use, uh, you know, the stock removal method to create your bevel, uh, it's up to you whether you want to normalize that metal. Of course, I've been working this piece under heat. Uh, I have probably induced some stresses into the steel, so to normalize the metal, I'm going to bring the whole blade back up to a good red heat, and then I'm going to let it cool slowly in the forge. So once I have let that knife cool in the forge, it's ready to heat it back up and do the quench. Quick note here, I am showing some footage from another video where I used burns torches to heat the knife for quenching. This works okay, but it does take a lot longer than a forge would take, and it's harder to get a nice even heat on the blade. So since I have a forge, I will be using that. But I did want you to see that there are other ways to do this. To properly harden steel, you want to get it above 1475 degrees Fahrenheit. Steel will no longer stick to a magnet if it's above about 1450 degrees. So you can test it with a magnet. If the magnet won't stick, you're probably there, or at least you're very close. Uh, so you can return it to heat for just another few seconds and then it should be ready to go into the quench. Now I really want the spine of this cleaver to be as resilient as possible, so I will not be quenching the spine. I'm just putting the first inch or so of the edge into the oil. I'm just using a vegetable oil. Some people will use motor oil, some people use oil that's specifically designed for, uh, for quenching. When it comes to handmade knives, and especially when you're first starting out, there's nothing wrong with using whatever kind of oil you prefer. Do keep in mind that some types of oil have a, have a tendency to burst into flame. I would say about half the time I quench a knife I get some flames. So I always wear gloves when I do this. So far I haven't been burned, but I imagine that would be a very, very unpleasant experience. Once I have the initial quench done, and I've allowed the blade to air cool a little bit, I'll put the rest of the knife back into the oil, both to cool it and also to give a little bit of a darkened finish to the steel. Now, if you've done everything properly so far, you should now have a hardened steel blade. So at this point, I'm going to temper the steel, which means I'm gonna place it in the oven at about 400, 450 degrees. Kinda of depends on how far back you wanna temper the steel. The idea is just to introduce a little bit of softness back into the steel so you have some resilience and uh, the blade is less likely to break or chip. All right, at this point, if we have done everything correctly, we should have a knife that has been both hardened and tempered, so it's ready to take an edge. And all we really have left to do is to finish out the bevel and put a good working edge on the knife. As you can see, I'm continuing to use files to put the edge on. I don't know how obvious it is, but uh, the steel is definitely harder to move after it's been heat treated. Depending on the type of file that you're using and uh, depending on the type of steel and how hard the steel is, you can actually wind up damaging a file with a hardened steel. Now in this case, because I've used these files before and I have an idea of how hard the steel is, I know I can get away with using these files on even a pretty hard steel. Of course, the nice thing is, because I didn't pay a lot for the files, eh, if I do happen to ruin one, it's not that hard to replace. So as you can see here, I'm working back and forth. I never want to take too much material off of one side before I flip it over to do the other side. You're always working toward a truly symmetrical bevel, meaning that on both sides of the knife, the bevel is at a consistent angle and meets right in the middle. Now, when it comes to the last little bit of finishing, uh, finishing the bevel and finishing the edge, I like to wrap sandpaper around a file. They do have files that have a finer bite to them, uh, but there's no reason not to use sandpaper at this point. Sandpaper is inexpensive. It comes in a wide range of different grits and it can be used in a number of different ways to, uh, to really clean up that bevel and that edge. I don't know if you noticed, but those files do sometimes leave some pretty deep gouges, uh, and it's nice to be able to come back through with, uh, with a whole range of different grits of sandpaper and uh, work, your way, work your way up to the higher grits until you have a really nice clean edge. And there's no way around it. This is just gonna take some time. I've spent as much as probably two hours or more uh, putting the final, final touches on a blade with sandpaper. But I think the more time you put into it, the more you're gonna get out of it at the end. And as with all aspects of making a knife, 
you can spend as much or as little time on it as you want. Uh, for me, in this particular build, all I really want is a good clean edge that I can cut with, and as you can plainly see, I'm going for that hand forged, uh, you know, hammer forged look. So I'm less concerned about the real fine aesthetics of the edge of the knife and much more concerned with the functionality. So after testing it on a couple different kinds of paper, I would say I'm eh, satisfied. I might do a little bit more work to put a really fine edge on there. Now, initially I had planned to put a wrap on this, and I actually did. You'll see some footage here at the end. Um, I ran into a little bit of trouble. This was the first time that I had done a wrap and then used fiberglass resin. I kind of messed it up. So if you want me to do a video on doing a wrap, uh, just let me know and, and, I'll, and I'll do that. I think I have a couple of other videos where I have done some of that. Um, there are many different styles of wrap, and the one I use is actually a very simple, straightforward one. I just use some twine. Um, I think it has a good look to it. The way that I mixed the resin with the hardener and the way I applied it and stuff, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm totally satisfied with it. Don't necessarily follow my example on this. I think if I had it to do over, there would be a couple of changes. So I guess I'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I had a lot of fun building this, and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun using it. I think this is actually going to be a good little cleaver, maybe, maybe very useful, especially in the kitchen, uh, or maybe doing kitchen-type duties when camping. Uh, I could see it in a couple of other roles. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I would love to have you as a part of the, the community here. Uh, click that bell when you subscribe so you get the updates. And with that, I will say whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.